This is a video I'm gonna do on a very unique car. And when I say unique, um, it's one of these RPO cars that you really don't know how many are actually made. But the guess is somewhere around possibly 200, maybe a little less. And what this car is, this is an IROC convertible. Okay, everybody's seen one of those. This is a five-speed IROC convertible. Okay, some people have seen those too. But this is an 88 G92 IROC convertible. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of one of these cars that was supposed to exist, or not supposed to exist, but does exist. So, we have, uh, you know, it's a five liter car, tune port car with a five speed. Now, how do you identify one of these cars? Well, we can go to the RPOs in a minute, but I'll just go into some of the basics on it. So if you know what you're looking at, you can almost identify the car immediately by the way it sits. It sits lower. So that has the FE2, the IROC suspension in it. And so the back's down a little bit lower and if it's all original, it will have come with the 245 50 Gatorback tires on it. Not a lot of the convertibles came with uh, the taller tires, the, the uh, 55 series on them, not the 50s. So that was a lesser suspension. Then the big one is you look at it here, and it's a convertible with rear disc brakes. So that's going to be the big identifier. So you may see an 89. IROC convertible and you may look into the interior and find out it's a five-speed car But you're gonna look in the back. It's gonna have a big old gap up here jacked up like a 4 by 4 and It won't have disc brakes. You won't see it doesn't exist so and That's goes for 90 uh, 91 and 92 uh, The only IROC convertibles you will see with rear disc brakes will be 87 and 88 Okay we're going to give some credit to the 87s because they're pretty rare too. But the 88 is something even more spe special when it's ordered like this. And so the 88 has, okay, the LB9 motor on it. What's an LB9 motor? LB9 motor is the 5 liter tune port motor. And if you look up at the RPO code, it's going to tell you it's an LB9 with 190 horsepower. Well, that's wrong because if it's a five-speed car and you could have a five-speed coupe or a 1LE car, it'll be a 225 horsepower car. How do you tell the difference between these motors, even though the RPO is the same one? Well, if you look at the manifolds, if you look at a 305 manifold, it's gonna be smaller. That's a 350 manifold. That's the same as a 350. The LB9 five-speed car uh, uses a bigger injector doesn't use the 22 pound uh, injector from the 5.7. It actually uses a weird injector, a 20 pound injector, as to where the 5.0 motors are, uh, I think 18 or 19 pound injectors. So that's a little bit different that you have there. Then the entire exhaust system is going to be the bigger diameter one, which shares the same as your 350 car or the 1LE car or the five speed coupe so it's got the big pipe exhaust now since we're under here i don't think i can turn the light on but well i'll come back in a minute with a flashlight and show you that it uses the australian differential the nine volt so most of you won't see another convertible with the with a heavier duty rear end in it unless it's one of these cars <clears throat> so uh that's kind of the start then Obviously, well, it's a five-speed, so you can see that on the inside. And another easy telltale sign is if you see a five-speed car <clears throat> in an IROC convertible, and you go to the speedometer, and it's got a 140-mile-an-hour speedometer in it, more than likely it's an 87 or 88. So you go to 89, it's going to have a 120-mile-an-hour speedometer. And the big kicker is, is the 5500 red line uh, mark on the tachometer of which your uh, automatic car I believe is 4,500, 5,000 right in there. So there's a difference. So another aspect of this car is the five-speed transmission itself. And this is what sets the 88 apart. 
If you had an 87 one of these that was optioned with the rear disc brakes and a convertible, which is rare to begin with, it would have a 190 horsepower motor. This is a 225 horsepower motor. If you had an 87 that was optioned with one of these, it would not have the first year of this transmission. This is the world-class T5 transmission. It was only put on the 1LE cars and the five-speed IROC GTAs with the G92 option. The G92 is the higher, uh, is the differential. The differential is just the 345 ratio. So basically, on an order sheet, when you were picking one of these cars in 1988, if you said, I want an IROC convertible, well, sir, do you want the G92 option, which is, I don't know, pick a number, $205 more? Well, yeah, I'll take that. It's quicker gear ratio. Well, all of a sudden, it triggers the build for this car because of that G92. That's why I kind of call these cars the G92. And what it triggers is, it's okay, you got the higher horsepower engine, you got the FE2 suspension, you got the bigger tires, you got the KC4 oil cooler, which is the only on the you know higher performance cars. You got the world-class transmission, you got the Australian nine volt differential, which the G92 ratio is the 345 ratio. Uh, rear disc brakes, um, the bigger exhausts, bigger exhaust manifolds, all of that stuff. Well, did you get that for the $220 or what? No. This car is like $9,000 more than one that's not optioned like this. So these were very expensive. I think the window sticker on this car was $28,000, $29,000 in 1988. It's as much as a Corvette. And so that is what makes this car very, very unique. And how many of them are out there? Like we said, we don't know. Because you can break down how many IROC convertibles are. And if you go to my website, you know, at gmclassics.com, there's a sheet on this uh, car, and I break down what they are. And so when it gets uncountable is how many of them were five speeds convertibles with the LB9 motor and all this. It's just not countable. And so you have to just guess. And guessing is by, well, how many G92 cars did they actually make in 88? Well, if you had the G92 cars, between all of the automatics and five speeds, there was only like 5,200 of them made. So how many IROC convertibles were made? Well, it's even less, <laughs> you know? So, so it gets down to a, a, a number. So to show you or tell you, explain how rare these cars are this. So if you follow me and you know my car collection, I've been doing this, you know, most of my life. And, you know, you know all these crazy cars are, 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 are mine or I work on them for people and our buddies' cars. This is just a, basically a big car club here is what it is. <clears throat> and I have owned some 30-plus third-generation uh, cars from GTAs, Trans Ams, Camaros, IROCs, things like that. Many of them have been brand new, very rare cars from the General Motors Museum even. Brand new GTAs, brand new, you know, 5.7 IROCs, 87s, 89s, 88s. Uh, I had probably one of the most rare cars of all, one of the brand new B4C uh, 91, or excuse me, 92 uh, uh, police cars. Never used. I mean, literally with 100 miles on it or so. And brand new turbo Trans Ams, all of the, all of the rare uh, cars like that. However, this is the only one I could never find another one of. This is why I've kind of kept these cars. I've actually owned two of these. I had another one that had a lot of miles on it. When I say a lot, it had like 50,000 miles on it. And I sold that and I waited and I waited and I waited and I dug and I knew about this car and I kept beating somebody up and I finally got it. And I've had it for, you know, maybe seven or eight years now, but I had the other one for 15 years before that. And so, uh, and one of the weird things that I've, I've looked at is both of the cars were red, which I've seen ones in other colors. Uh, they do exist. And both of the cars came from the same exact dealer in Portland, Oregon. So somebody up there knew what they were doing when they ordered these cars to make them kind of weird. So I don't know. And you know, if you own one of these, uh, I'll, if you think you may think you own one, but you may not, or you may not even 
you may own one and you don't know you have it. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm doing this video to see how many other ones are out there. Um, I've seen a, a really, one that's actually, I wouldn't say better shape than this car because this car's incredible, but it actually had lower miles on this car. This car's got 20 something thousand miles on it. So it's got a high, it's high miles in my world. That's the lowest mile I could find. But this particular guy had a, a uh, 88 that had something around 11, 12,000 miles on it. It was black and it was gold, beautiful car, but it was really weird. No air condition, had every option in the world, but no air, just like a one LE car, had the, had the uh, dummied up belt pulley up here and everything. So that was a, a, a weird car in itself too. How would you order one of these with everything but no air condition? So <clears throat> um, one of the things that, why does this car not exist past 88? There's a very, very good reason for that. And if you know these cars, these are what Ben, I call them the, the uh, Ben, the three. So that identifies a factory convertible. So if you look at that number right there, uh, your coupes will be like a one. These are threes. And you'll look at some of the conversion cars that are done after the fact. They'll still be one. If you ever see a 5.7, uh convertible that somebody claims is factory i guarantee that vin will be one it won't be three this is factory so that's rare in itself right there that's identifies the, the real factory convertible however the factory convertible is still you know commissioned by the asc corporation and they're the ones who built these cars uh after the fact from a coupe car but they didn't build it from a coupe car they built it from a vin three car because the vin was already there slated for that and from what I understand, that the cars didn't come with the, with the roof complete, uh, the back glass, or anything like that in them. I'd like to see some photos of the assembly line of that, but I don't have any uh, of when they started building these. But nevertheless, they're done by ASC. So if you know a, a third generation car already, you know they're, they're not exactly the, the most stout body. It's a unibody car with, you know, front subframe in it. Uh, so, if you were to hack the roof off of these, well, you would have to do some support underneath the car. And underneath the car is gonna require some frame support, and they do. And these cars have a very, very big uh, frame support on them. In fact, let me go back and get that flashlight. I'm sorry, I'm gonna walk over here. Uh, I won't edit the video out. You can just see it how it's done. Get my flashlight over here on the bench. <clears throat> Callaway twin turbo that we've been working on there. That's going to a parade this weekend, Dallas uh, Christmas parade. <clears throat> so anyway, back to where we were. So here's the framing that they do on these ASC cars. And this applies to the to all of them, even if it's a V6 car. They, they put this right here. And so that makes the car, I wouldn't say it's a stout car by any means, but it's the the factory vin 3 convertibles are not bad some of the conversion ones they're flimsy but these these aren't bad so here is why the car does not exist past 88. see how clean this thing is that's the catalytic converter and that's the big one that's the that's the 350 converter and you can see the pipes here how big they are and so that would be the same thing as your 5.7 cars and then there's your bilstein shock in this car and that's your Australian differential back there, the nine bolt, big pipes. So the catalytic converter is why the car is not built past 1988. Because in 1989, they came out with an option called N10. And if you're familiar with F-Bodies, you know what that is. That's the dual catalytic converter car. Now, that wasn't an option. That was a mandatory uh, EPA thing, basically put on the cars that had the higher horsepower, which would be the 5.7 cars and the LB9 225 horsepower motor. So the LB9 225 horsepower motor would be only be in your 1LE cars that had the five speed or your IROC uh, or GTA uh, uh, G92 cars, which are rare in themselves too. So the N10 would be on those cars, but the N10 catalytic converter sits way out here, with the two. So there was no room to put this framing on these cars. And so after 1988, you won't see the high horsepower convertible exist. And that's the reason why.
Now, for what it's worth, if you have a 1989 five-speed LB9 car, you actually have five more horsepower than this car. So this is 225. That car's 230, because, and that's because of the cat. Everything else on the motor is the same, but that's that's your difference right there. So uh, that's that's the story of, of what these are, why they were, and, and how they're rare and weird. So... What else can I show you on these cars? So to identify one of these, one, you would have to simply have an 88, and two, you would have to have rear disc brakes on it. Three, it'd have to be a five-speed. Uh, four, it would have to be a, a VIN 3 car. Uh, five, here's where you get into your RPO stuff. Let's look at a couple of these. And these are the important ones here. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but it's gonna go what, what you have. So let's just go to your, your your G letters over here. G92, so you see that. That would basically signify this car. Uh, and then you would have the, uh, oh, I remember which one it was, the rear disc brakes, uh, CD code, which one was it, CD4 maybe? Don't get me to remember that one exactly, but yes, the, the rear disc brakes would be in there. Now, the, the big one here is the transmission. Is that MM5, I believe, is a five-speed transmission, but the MK6 identifies the world-class transmission. And so that's a huge one. You won't see that except on the 1LE cars or the G92, 88, 89 later cars. Uh, then, of course, KC4 is your, your oil cooler or uh, cage, there it is. It's all the way at the, the end over there, KC, KC4. So that's your oil cooler. Mm. And then the, uh, that'll be kind of your, and then of course the suspension, uh, which all, not all IROCs are the same. The FE2. So right there, remember that, not all IROCs are the same. There's IROCs out there with, with the throttle body motors in there. And so the FE2, basically, in a convertible, you won't see an FE2 convertible other than this car. Not this particular, but option like this. Because they just didn't put all of that stuff in these convertibles. Because one, it, it's a convertible. Two, it ride too rough. Uh, three, it's, you know, just not as structurally sound. And so it was just kind of an odd thing for them to do. And so that's why you see most of the convertibles won't have, certainly won't have the Gatorback tires on them originally and usually have the, the more narrow tires on them. And some of them even have the dumbed down wheels on them. These are the, you know, 16 by eights, the offset, the double offset IROC wheels with different offsets front and rear, just like the GTAs. Uh, so, and of course that's one of the best stances of any car of the eighties, probably the best stance of a car of the eighties, GTAs and IROCs because of those big wheels, so. That's kind of it. Uh, you know, all the other options could have it, could, may not have it. You know, things like the radio, I think that's the highest end radio. Or maybe they had one that had the, the, uh, the graphic equalizer on there. This car didn't have that. Uh, of course, air condition is that. Um, one of the other things, of course, that makes uh, these cars a little bit more, you know, power windows. Uh, this car, of course, has that. Most of them don't. Uh, this car does not have your uh, um, electric mirrors. It's got your manu manual mirrors, which is kind of strange. It has all this other stuff in manual mirrors. And then, of course, you could get, get a power seat on this car. This one doesn't have it. So that's an option that this car doesn't have that was available in any of these kind of cars, like the IROC convertibles and things like that. But, uh, let me get that back down there. Yeah, I'll put it closer later. I have to get down there. Then one of the other things that they did, which is kind of dangerous on this car, was you click that and this thing could pop up. Well, actually it doesn't. You have to have to maybe the brake down. Let me see how that works. There you go. Yeah, they got smart, but the brake has to be down to do that. But when you're going down the road, you could actually hit that and do and pop that up to the car, which was pretty ignorant. 
But it's a beautiful boot, the way they did it. Very well integrated. Um, of course, yeah, leather seats. You know, this is the half leather seats, which is, that is an option, uh, which is a high-end option on this car, which get the fancier Doyle panels and things like that. What else is there? I can't think of anything more. And yeah, that's just me. It's a magnet. Let's put it on there. Put a lot of wax under it. <laughs> so, hope that answers some questions about these. Uh, let me go back to the 87s because I don't want to discredit the 87s by any means. They're rare too that have the rear disc brakes, but it won't have the same engine and it won't have the same transmission. So that is kind of the bigger difference right there. When I say the same engine, they, you know, these are the, uh, the LB9 higher horsepower engine, which is in the, uh, this car, the G92 cars. It's hard to identify unless you, you, you know the car and things like that. <clears throat> Has the bigger manifolds, the uh, different injectors, and they have a bigger camshaft too. That's kind of one of the other things I don't know if I mentioned before. And I learned that from another guy that's torn into several of these and built a few of them. And one of the things that I will tell you and I've learned over time is the tune port injection. Okay, you know, this car would have been smart if they put a 350 in it, right? Oh, of course it would have been. We would all love to have this car, but it was a 350. They just never made it. They just made a higher horsepower 305, which is the same horsepower as the 350 within five horsepower. That was it. It's all, all, all the difference. But here's the difference between the 305 and the 350 and why this car will do 155 miles an hour. The RPM range of your five liter motor is more because of this runner size. This runner size is really was designed for your five liter cars. The 5.7 never was the optimal uh, design. That's why everybody that has a 5.7 tune port had to go do things like this and put the bigger runners on them to get more RPM out of them. The 305, you don't have to do that. You can, but the RPM range of this car, they will pull to 5,500, 5,700, even close to 6,000, pretty damn good, uh, as to where your 5.7 TPI will not do that at all. So you have more of a linear RPM range, or you're more broadband with these. And they may not have quite the torque as the 5.7, but they run throughout the RPM range better, which ultimately gives you a higher top speed. And so that's kind of what these cars will do. And so all of the tests you'll see are the, the five-speed IROCs or GTAs are the ones that, with this optional motor, are the ones that really topped out well. So, but that doesn't mean they'll, they'll win in a drag race because the torque does help those and it's all traction dependent. Uh, racing these back in the day when they were stock, you could see one win over the other, you know, one time or the other is kind of the thing. And we're really splitting hairs here because we are talking about a 225 horsepower motor. whoop de doo But in the day, they ran pretty good. And when they came out, they were pretty fast compared to everything else of, you know, as everyone buzz terms, the malaise era now, uh, which I... I that's fine. Somebody else made that word up. <clears throat> but not a lot of malaise in these cars. They're, they run pretty good. So I'm going to end the video here. I'm sure I forgot a hundred things, but that's kind of what these G92 IROC convertibles are about. And I hope I answered some questions and maybe found some more of these out there in the world. <laughs>